The podcast is back, baby. That's right, Timbo. <laughs> it's been a while. We were literally we had a little bit of a break for the summer. There's been a number of obstacles in our way that have stopped us from recording our highly regarded anticipated podcast everyone we were so happy to hear us back on the internet well, airwaves jacko there, there had been some requests of like what, I've, what, what I've, i haven't known what to do on my wednesday when the podcast that um i, also I was thinking think at this oh, point jacko we need to we need to quell any rumors that we have not fallen out a few people yes. have gone, what's, what's going on have you guys had an argument no we've not had an argument there's been, there's been other life events have got in the way as like jacko running far too far well, well that. one thing I was thinking about in the early hours of this morning, not to, um, it's, it's relevant. We like a few statistics. I was thinking, mm. I think we're at, and, and I know you like this, I think this is uh, episode 234, and we don't tend to ever have a break apart from at Christmas because, you know, you've got to go and deliver some presents. Mm. Um, so we, we must have been doing 50 episodes a, a year. So if my math is correct, like we've been doing the podcast every single week for between four and five years so i think that deserves it and that's why people are oh god something must have happened Mm. we actually decided to have a little break yeah just yeah people have been like i could tell you've been doing it that long because you run out of content boys (laughs) 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 we've had we've had two months off to think of some new ideas of things that we can talk about yeah so well i've decided to go and run an ultramath and so we've got something to talk about i mean that is the ultimate in scraping the barrel for content we need to do (laughs) stuff so we've got things to talk about that is the world. Um, and we well, I've definitely got about, something to talk about yes, for you I know, today. I'm, yeah. I'm interested to where it's going. I am going to be question master today, and I'm going to quiz Jacko with the intention of bringing up some raw emotion and hopefully making him cry. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't have this. I want to try and make you cry. That would be the real gem. Yeah, no one's ever seen Tim cry. No, they haven't. It's, um, it, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. It's not about me today, Jacko. <laughs> um, I don't even, do we want to roll a jingle or not? Oh, we just yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll roll the jingle. Um, all right, so let's... Not after we're, that, but like a proper roll the jingle. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're going to dive into a conversation today. It's all about Jacko's ring of fire, which is not an actual ring of... not actually his ring of it's, fire, but it's the ring of yeah, fire. And it, I, it, it wasn't like I had a night out and went to Sapna's in town. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, use your imagination. Um, so sit back and enjoy Jacko talking about his ring of fire. <laughs> yeah, I can't take that seriously, <laughs> but roll uh, that jingle. Listen, players, <laughs> you're listening to the Movement, Strength, and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts. Tim and Jacko. Right, so let's have a conversation about the Ring of Fire. So, for, I mean, if you haven't been involved in our socials or Jacko's socials and you are wondering what indeed is the Ring of Fire, um, Jacko, contextualize what yeah. it was that you decided to embark on this summer. Let's just clear up two things. It is... Number one is, whoa, the ring of fire. <laughs> and number two is, um, it, what it is, it's a, it was a three-day um, ultramarathon, um, which it does help if you know what you're doing, is, is a, a, one of the things I've learned. Okay, so um, let's start at the beginning. Why did you decide to do an ultramarathon? Um... <sighs> So like I'd I'd started doing more running, or I think it actually it it started in South Africa. Oh, Everyone's, that's a long way to run. No, yeah. as in the, the idea with we were we were we were in South Africa with you guys and um, Matt and Gemma, friends of ours, and I remember talking to Gemma because I remember trying to separate my my toes and I couldn't, and she was like wiggling to it anyway, and. So got on to talk about marathons. Maybe had she done a marathon or had Matt done a marathon? Mm. I remember thinking to myself, oh, yeah, you've always said you would have liked to do a marathon, but you never did because you was playing rugby, blah, 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 like you're not allowed to, contracts and what have you. And then I was like, oh, at that point, I think it had been seven years since I'd retired, and it was like, well, what's your excuse? So I literally, like the following week, just signed up to a marathon. Um, and then 
I, re I enjoyed the tra I really enjoyed the training. Um, I enjoyed using the run as a chance to like get away, connect to myself, and actually, as a it was a, it became a very good tool to actually like practice breathing better or train my breathing. And I was going down that rabbit hole at the time, so it was yeah, it was, it was good. It was almost like experimenting with my breath as I was running, as well as practicing and honing it. Um, and I had two rules for that marathon. One was enjoy it, and the other was you weren't allowed to stop yet to keep running. You did a um, you did a, a trail based marathon, didn't you? It yeah, wasn't a it, was a, um, it wasn't like a. It was a London trail. Marathon, it was a yeah, yeah. It was it was off road trail in Suffolk. Um, bits of it on the sand on the beach. It was actually good preparation because the 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 Ring of Fire was ninety percent trail running around like Anglesey coastal path. But anyway, essentially, I enjoyed it and wanted to enjoy it because I liked the training. So I didn't want to like finish that marathon and be like, oh god, I never want to do this again because absolutely our body's ruined and I hate it. And it did, I was pretty, I mean, I think I talked about this before, I was pretty stiff and like walking was difficult the day after. Um, but the following day, after the first marathon, like I actually trained again. I was like recovered pretty well and was, was pretty good. But what blew my mind was like the idea of running another marathon the following day. Um, so I was looking for, I was looking for a multi-day event. Um, this one propped, uh, cropped up. And it just ticked a number of boxes around Anglesey in North Wales. Like my mum and dad are from that area. Uh, my sister currently lives on Anglesey. It was like to go and visit my sister and do some recce's of the route and that type of thing. It was just uh, the idea of spending three in my mind. It was like, oh, running around the whole, get to see the whole coast of Anglesey, all the beautiful beaches all the way around across three days. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and what actually happened was I didn't see any of Anglesey other than just the, the you know, one foot square around where my feet were on the on the floor and that was if i could see through the tears in my eyes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, was... it started off as like that would be a really enjoyable few days to yeah. actually like descend the reality as i can gather from what i've seen so far was somewhat it was different. Like, yeah this, you know what's what's the worst that could happen we're just going to like go around anglesey that would be nice yeah so what, so, okay, so we've got, so it's three days, just, just again, just finish this contextualization. Yeah, it sorry. was three days. Give us the, the breakdown of what you had to do yeah. each day, what your time cut off, and then we can get into what you learned <laughs> and the process that yeah. you went through. So, um, and there's different levels to the learning. Uh, there's some, if anyone there's going to go and take on some sort of challenge um, that they've never done before, I can give some surface level stuff and then we can go as deep as you want to go. Okay. Um, so it was 135 miles in total which is 216 kilometers on day what they annoyingly they don't spread it out evenly and they they like squeeze it yeah. um, so you start one o'clock friday and you finish at three thirty sunday so you start one o'clock friday you've got 35 miles to do and you've got nine hours to do it so it costs 10 p.m at night day two you start at six o'clock in the morning um, and my first one of my first mistakes was like, well, finishing at 10, starting at six, eight hours. That's not too bad. Standard. Um, yeah. And it's not like you finish at 10 and go to sleep and then wake up at six and start. But like there's a whole anyway. In your um, mind, you've got like blue blockers on. Get my red light. <laughs> yeah, bit of breathing. Like, nice little okay. meal. Might take you a bit of time to travel between a blow. But yeah, it was. Uh, and then anyway, so then day two started at six. Um, that was then the big day that was like more than double. So it was 60 or about double 67 miles, 112 kilometers, or something. Um, and you had 18 hours to do it. That's a long way. That's so it's really long way. six in the morning till midnight. No. Um, and then, uh, day three again, start at six in the morning and then you finished at three thirty. It was only 33 miles. And they were nice. They gave you an extra half an hour. So you had nine and a half hours to do it. But that's, but that's because they gave you half an hour extra because you had to go over Hollyhead Mountain, which is like, it's not crazy high, but it's 500 meters. Across the whole three days, because the coastal path is quite up and down, you do 4,000 meters of elevation. So it's like going up and down Snowdon four times. Um, and the thing that, uh, just one related to these timings, is there was then like, Actually, they were the cutoffs, and this is where my poor preparation before the event started. In that, I saw those as cutoffs, 
and this is like this is ridiculous. I was even like, you know, at some points, I was like, you know, well, on day two, you know, got eighteen hours. I'm gonna get down to Newborough. Um, <laughs> love it down in Newborough. I might go, it might go in the sea. Uh, might stop off at the pub and grab us some bite to eat, and then get, you know, literally thinking, you can have an half hour break if you want. Yeah. Whereas um, <laughs> they had checkpoints. Not specific, not every every two hours, but roughly every two ish hours. The checkpoints range from anything as short as like eleven k up to I think the longest might have been eighteen k, nineteen k, something like that. But that meant if there was a short one, you'd go, "Oh, brilliant! It's only eleven k." Mm. But then what that would mean is it would be like a horrendous terrain for eleven k. So yeah. um, and depending, they couldn't do the checkpoint had to be a natural sort of break or place within the trail where you could actually get a car to mm-hmm. and the support teams and all that sort of jazz. Um, so, yes, I very much had a love-hate relationship with these um, checkpoints, which started two weeks before the event when I actually decided to do some research and found out what the checkpoints were. And I was like, oh, in all of my training, I'd never, ever, ever once ran for time, ever. Mm-hmm. So it actually already started stressing me out. One, that I didn't like being told I had to get somewhere for a certain time and then the other thing was like you could literally get you could you could get timed out after like literally 10k the first checkpoint I think was 11k um but yeah it just meant that you were constantly on the clock on the clock and I you know I went into it saying it wasn't a race yeah and it it very very quickly became a race I mean the other context is like day one was okay uh, some basic sort of challenge on day one was this year they decided you could just do day one if you wanted and they called it the fire starter so you were like running along with people at the start and there's people going quite fast and you're like going oh they must be doing day one or you'd be you'd be trying all that was different was like on your number it was like a red thing rather than a black thing and so you'd be asking people and i was as you could imagine quite excited at the start and you, you, you walk i remember walking towards the tent for registration the guy's like are you doing uh, the ring of fire or are you doing the fire starter and I went, silly bloody question, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, which, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, things, yeah. I say, I'd, I'd, the furthest I'd run in a day before this was 30 miles. So one of the problems I had was like, day one was actually a PB. Never done that before. Day mm. two was like a double PB and then day three was another PB. Yeah. And, yeah. I think you, like... Uh, we spoke about this a while before well, before you, you had the event and you were like you actually can't train for an ultra in a sense of you can't just go out and run 35 clock 35 miles in three days and see how you get on and, and do that for training like so you, there's always going to be a certain mm. amount of unknown at least in the first time you've ever done one the second time you've done one then okay you've got you kind of know a little bit more about what you're going into but your first kind of like um foray into the marathon ultra marathon world was go, always going to be quite difficult what did you, um, because you managed to maintain quite a high level of uh, like a buoyant attitude. So I remember seeing you on the morning before the race and you're like, got these new shoes, got some like oh, element, it, like before got, you, you had everything going on. And I was like, oh, it's great. Jacko is he's, he's ready oh. to go. But like, were you at that point already bricking it about no, what was coming? No, yeah. Or was it, did you not, did it not hit home until you actually started the race? Um, no, I was... I was, I, I couldn't, so it was started Friday, Wednesday and Thursday night. I, I found it hard to sleep. I was excited. Um, okay. And at that point I thought I was well prepared. So I was like, mm. not necessarily, I knew I was going in something I'd never done before. So, but I was, there was a, a confidence is probably the wrong word. So I just definitely knew I didn't know what I was doing, but, um, it was like, I'm, I'm happy with what I've done and I've, and I've done with what I've done. Uh, something I'd, something I'd said, previously is like if you can do half of something i believe you can do all of it and mm-hmm. from a mindset perspective it sounds a bit silly but like also rationally like because you know once you get halfway through something you're like we well, you only have to do what you've already done and you've already just done what you've done so you know yeah. you can do it type of thing and for the marathon i'd never ran more than half a marathon which people told me you should you know in your marathon training you should run at least up to 18 20 miles or whatever and i just mm. I didn't more so because I didn't have time and that type of stuff. Um, and doing half of a marathon and then being able to get comfortable at half marathons, 
meant that marathon was all right. But the trouble I had was I massively disrespected the challenge of the distance and what a multi-day event is like. So I thought by doing what I did manage to do in June in Exmoor was a 40 miles over two days. There was this 30 miler and then they had an extra 10 miles um, of a separate race on the sat on the following day. And that was good for me to like run the next day and actually feel like you're stiff as a board. And as soon as you start running, like you start freeing up. And actually I felt better on the second day than the first day, but it was only 10, it was only 40 miles in total. What uh, a, a top level or surface level sort of um, lesson for me is back to what I already knew. Like you need to do half of it. Like, so I, what I needed was I needed a 70 miler mm-hmm. over two days um, in and I feel like the we've talked about this before with some of like uh, like Gemma who who mentioned before the um, physio at British Athletics. You're most prone for injury when you PB when you're at your best because yeah. your body's doing something it's never done before. It doesn't your nervous system just doesn't know what it's like to experience that or fire like that or whatever. Um, and I've definitely felt it now afterwards. It's like having done it and actually survived. My running now that I've recovered feels amazing went out for a run this morning and i'm like i my, my i seen my old snc coach uh joe brun uh, we'd had him on pockets actually um and he was like he was like very clear on sort of like two things he was like well what he was like you've basically done probably six months of training and squeezed into three days so he was like if you let your body recover yeah you're gonna you've got that those adaptations but he was like your body is gonna pay you back for this this was like once i'd finished he didn't think i'd do it um just being honest and I actually mm. really there was two people that said that to me one was my, si- my sister's neighbor he'd never said it before but afterwards he was like um is a Geordie he's like I tell you what Jocko I didn't think he was gonna do it man <laughs> like and he was like he was like don't take this the wrong way he was like just you haven't like he know knew well we talked quite a bit when I visited mm. my sister he was like he know he knew what how much training I'd done he was like you hadn't done enough so you're not like you can't it was, I'm at, it's it's the, the body did she did well not to actually like um get injured uh but i feel like the the nervous system needs to get an experience of a certain amount before you then want to go and overload that mm-hmm. and i feel like a halfway point um would be decent i've got nothing necessary to back that up if you know what i mean but yeah, yeah. um and i definitely feel it now in the system if i go having let having recovered run now and it's like the amount of foot contacts i've got like my just my achilles and calves and things are just like bang 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 back it yeah. feels it feels good um so yeah that that, that was that was uh that was definitely uh it, that was definitely uh there's it's, it's weird right because there's like i wish i had have done that but then some of the biggest things i've got out of it as an event was because i wasn't that and i wasn't yeah. ready and i wasn't prepared um yeah but in terms of being excited before and and, and buoyant like yeah I, I, I was um it was almost like i knew I was I was like letting myself be because I was excited. I was letting myself be excited. Um, you, know, you asked Catherine; she was like, "Bloody hell!" In the morning of the thing, he was pissing about and like, doing this on his camera and blah 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 blah. And it was like, who was who was getting all the food ready? Who was getting all the drinks ready? Muggins <laughs> over here, <laughs> water boy. Yeah, she was absolute ledge. We can get onto it later. So yeah, I think interesting though because you say like if. if there has been a lot of experiences where you've not done something of that duration that's not going to be over quickly and you, your brain and system doesn't have the concepts. There'll be a lot of surprises that would have come up along the way. I've got to say, well, I didn't expect that because you'd never done it before. Whereas that's when you see people with like experience of these sorts of things, like you're going to go and do an event and things that happen, feelings that you get, your body's response, all that sort of stuff. You're like, oh, I've been here before. And I guess yeah. that's probably where the challenge came from, not having done that kind of a, amount of, running as you said like half of it before at, at what point when in the event itself did you start to kind of go oh dear like i haven't either i haven't prepared 
like optimally for this or i'm in over my head or i'm like yeah do, when the word of the world kind of close in yeah. and go okay this is this is this is serious it so i say day one i was hoping to do it in uh what do we have we had nine hours to do it and i think i was hoping to do it in about seven and a half and it took me eight and a half so it's a bit slower it meant we got back a bit later to bed a bit later I had an ice but i felt better after the ice when it was like okay that was harder than i was thinking it was going to be and day two is like just don't know what day two is going to be like and it was a case of like okay uh, lie down in bed alarm set for half four because we had to get up and then drive half an hour to the start of the next checkpoint because i chose to like have the base at my sister's house because it was about half an hour drive from any of the checkpoint any of the, the, the day starting points so it squeezed that time from like, okay, probably got in bed at about half 11, 12, alarm set at half four. System couldn't turn off. Brain, like all night, nervous system was just like, well, uh, I don't know about you, Jacko, but uh, I'm ready to go running. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. so couldn't sleep. Um, I reckon I slept, I reckon I slept like two or three times for 10 minutes, something like that. Um, but again, there was a bit of an excitement of like, day two is like the thing it's like the, it's the double distance day well if you if you can do day two like you statistically um uh, history has shown that like only one or two people in the final day don't make it mm -hmm. type of thing if you make it to start day three you, you've, you're very close to doing it um and in my mind i was very much like thinking that was the case and a lot of people talked about that there's one person brian Keane, who's another fellow ultra runner that isn't an ultra runner we had him on the podcast a couple of times mm -hmm. and he did say to me i met him in ireland he gave me some very good advice and we'll probably come back to this in this story that he was like no no day two isn't your problem he was like day three is your problem and it was like what is that like, he'd done he'd done marathon de Saba and one in the arctic and, also, and he was like you won't be you you might not be able to get out of bed on day three he said he says he remembers um, his mum and his sister i think or his daughter having to physically pick him up to get him out of bed because he couldn't get him going for that final day. And you're like mm. thinking, oh, crikey. Yeah. But it was good that we heard. It was good that my wife heard that as well, most importantly. Uh, but, yeah, so I'll come back to that because day two or day one was the most of the route that I knew. We'd wrecked, most, we'd wrecked half of day one. So day two, there's bits of it we knew from just being around the area and whatnot, but um, just some really, really slow bits, really slow bits. And um, I came into the first checkpoint about 15 minutes early, which was okay, um, but wanted to start to build up a bit of a buffer for like, okay, if I'm going to die later, let's have a bit of a buffer. And the next checkpoint, I'd lost five minutes, so I was down to 10. And the other next one, I'd like, came in. cut off? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I basically was then like, it, it started to become stressful being that, that close. Yeah. And I think before the third checkpoint, there was eight checkpoints on day two. Before the third one, Catherine started running with me, completely unplanned. She'd run the last section of day one planned because it yeah. was in the, in the dark. She was like, it's just nice to have someone with you in the dark. But she started running at the, uh, before the third checkpoint on, on day two just because she could see that I needed it. They were worried that I wasn't going to make that checkpoint because there was a mm. tracker you could see where people are going and stuff. Um, and there was some funny stuff of like um i don't know how much of this side of me you've seen but like of just anyone when you make someone extremely stressed like the how you think you go very primal and like we'd started four minutes late on day two and the guy in his announcement said you know we've never ever started late ever mm. but there were four minutes late. anyway i get to i get to the checkpoint at beaumaris no the one before beaumaris which i think beaumaris was halfway but the one before i got to the checkpoint i was like to a marshal, I was like, or just sort of, you get there and you're just like, you're trying to be as quickly as possible because mm. there's eight checkpoints. If you spend 10 minutes at a checkpoint, you've wasted an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. You ain't got that. So you're trying to be as quick as you can, have something to eat, fill up your bottle again, like go. And um, I was like, can someone confirm the four minutes that we, like, you're giving us those back? <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, oh, no. And then, like, so, and I said it a little bit aggressively. By the time I got to the next one, when I'd not been given an answer, I was like, can someone 
fucking <laughs> confirm that we are getting those four minutes and someone oh it was it was it was two minutes that we started late and I was like it was fucking four and that, that, Joey, like those four minutes were like and sorry we don't normally swear on the podcast but like yes it was it was it was raw and that was like mega desperate it was like four minutes meant everything anyways people just like okay tell that crazy guy at the back that like it's okay we'll give him his four minutes but that's stressful right like you, you think about those um like when we've run condition sessions it's a bit of a, a completely different context but you set those up and it's like right we're gonna go every 45 seconds and it's like you've got running to do or whatever and you're like if you're the guy at the front you get there with like 20 seconds to spare you're like just chilling like yeah. absolutely fine you see the like rugby context you see the prop forward coming in like literally on 44 seconds it's like right <laughs> we're going we're going again. Again. <laughs> so it's the least fast least fittest person just gets absolutely shafted in those so if you're coming in with like 10 minutes to spare it's not like you can sit down, like take a shoe out of stone out of your shoe. Like you are literally like running for your life in terms of staying in the event each time with with minimal cushion. It's, I it's, sat that's stressful. I sat down once at a checkpoint, and that was the the penultimate checkpoint on the last day. So only to change my socks is the only time yeah. I sat down. Um, but yeah, so as day two just got. Million. But you went through these different stages where it was like actually would feel good to run all of a sudden, even though you felt absolutely mm. gone. Um, but essentially, it kept, my, my Garmin ran out of battery, flipping halfway through day two. It couldn't even last. So day two ended up being 17 hours, 45 minutes. I came in shout, 15 minutes. Shout out Garmin. <laughs> to spare. Yeah, shout out Garmin. Sort me out with a better watch, son. Where's, um, who's our mate that works with Garmin? Martin Yelling. Martin Yelling, these sorts of, he anyway. He's yeah. like, well, you just, it basically, you bought the cheap there Garmin, didn't you, Jack? Yeah, but the, G, the GPS on the Garmin absolutely rinses the battery, on, on all, all of them, to be honest, like all yeah. trackers, it's the GPS track. Anyway, side note. Well, it became, what, what it ended up doing was, it ended up being like, well, you don't know where you, you don't know how fast you're going, you don't know how far you've gone, you don't know how long you've gone. It was a case of like, you've just got to get to that next checkpoint. Mm. And it was like, how long is it? How far? Right. And that, and that, and that was it. Um, I say Catherine of those 67 miles, she joined me before we'd done 20, before we'd done a marathon on the, on that day. So she, she's probably done 50 miles that day, <laughs> 50 miles. Just and, out the box. and like 50, hundred meters ahead of me, some of it backwards. Some of it mm. holding a holding a bag full of food, like just incredible. Um, but yeah, we 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 got there and it was like, wow. Um, I remember getting back, having the ice bath because the ice bath helped last time. Ice bath nearly sent me into some sort of like, yeah, thermal shock. I was like shaking, shivering, got in bed, like couldn't get warm. I mean, by the time the we got system to... at that point is like, don't put any more stress in. This is a bad idea. Like, but, don't stress me anymore. But my, but my, but my muscles and my joints and like my legs liked the ice, but just like my yeah. nervous system didn't. Yeah. So probably got laid down in bed at like half one, and again alarm set for half four, and it was like, well, I know what's going to happen because I just experienced it before. Like, you'll be able mm -hmm. to sleep, and brain's just going like, let's run, let's run, let's run. Or when, when are we going running? When I'm, I'm ready? It's like I'm ready, Jack. I know where we're going. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Again, dozed off for 10, 20 minutes or something like that. Woke up and then that's... I knew it was bad on day two, but then this is when it just... So I wake up and, I'm, and I feel sick. I've got a headache. And it was, this, it was the same type of feeling and sensations I had from a, from a brain injury. Mm -hmm. And I turned to Catherine. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, and it was like, I don't want to do it. I yeah. feel sick. Um, and she said, you, you, mu you, you need to try, otherwise you're going to regret it. Cause she, she didn't say, remember what Brian Keane had said to us, but she was remembering that she was like, cause I asked her afterwards, like, why did you push me? I'm surprised not push me, but join, you know, just encourage me. I didn't expect her to encourage me. I, ex I was expecting her to say, yeah, like, this is ridiculous. Enough is enough. Like you've had a good go at it. Mm. I like go, I then go to the toilet and I'm like, sat on the toilet my sisters didn't even have enough energy to close the door <laughs> little bobby her little her little baby had, had woke her up luckily and she came downstairs to uh, just wish me good luck she could hear me wish me good luck for the final day and i'm like i'm like sat there crying i can't poo i'm just a mess 
and the types of things that are going around in my head are like you idiot like like i was i was actually disgusted with myself of like because what I, and what i what i felt was like like because everyone there was so nice like all the stewards it's such a great event and all the other runners and everything it was amazing one of the amazing things about ultra running that I really loved was like you know you could look at me aesthetically i'm thin and some muscle tone and blah 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 it, it an ultra event like that doesn't care if you're 65 or 25 it doesn't care if you're like thin or not it doesn't care it doesn't care about any of that and you ju- it was just you had no idea you'd look at someone and go are they going to make it or not you're like got no idea um yeah. and uh i disrespected like everything so i i felt like i shouldn't have i felt i was sorry that i'd signed up um yeah signed up to it and i was a bit scared like because i didn't want to go and do it but then i felt a bit ashamed and i was very very negative but i felt just like like not um unrational like rationally negative of like you are you're an idiot like and this is not actually safe for you to do and like you know stay in your lane you're not an ultra runner so mm. don't sign up to stupid things that you're not prepared for and then the, the to to add to add to to add a bit of taste to it was like we'd um there's two like vivo barefoot and auction advantage had, had both like because we'd approach them to like sponsor uh, support mm-hmm. the event basically pay for two um guys to come and film um to film it to make like a documentary out of it because in my mind there was going to be this nice story and <laughs> out of it whatever and i was at that i'm going Scenic like documentary of anglesey is going to look beautiful yeah. <laughs> and it was like you know you're an idiot for all those reasons i just said and it was like add on top of that you've got two people to come and film this and two companies to pay for it to be done like what are you going to say to them what's the story now oh we tried hard and we had a good go at it and it was really hard the first two days but we couldn't do the last day but everyone likes a trier like (laughs) what i mean i was literally like trying to go through my mind like what are you gonna what are you gonna do like what's gonna be the story anyway um my little sister goes just try and get in the car that's the first step and i like looked up and i was like you know like, like my hair's like over my face i was like i'll i'll i'll, I'll try and get in the car because it was like <laughs> i felt like it was it, it was a beautiful thing because i'd like you know i'd, I'd written down like, i knew what the checkpoints were how far to do it but i'd completely forgotten about the ability to literally get to the start mm. and there's some there's definitely like a simple what's the simplest actionable step you can take in something in life when you feel completely overwhelmed mm-hmm. and out of your depth like there's something that you can that you can do you can take yeah. what is there try and find that or get people around you that can support you to actually do that mm-hmm. and, and and that's what happened i didn't i didn't think she didn't challenge me she didn't suggest anything other than try and get in a car so I tried to get in the car, literally. <laughs> I, I was then, I'll get in the car. Um, my sister-in-law, Sarah, came. She was picking us up. She then sees me on the toilet as well. Um, like, by this point, I've already done a poo in the middle of the street, like, <laughs> on day two. Like, you've lost, you've got no re- respect for yourself. I don't know. It's not the same, but it makes me think if we're, like, when Karen went through pregnancy, there comes a point where she was, like, going to go and, like, had all these yeah. pictures in mind. It's going to be perfect. And then there's after a bit of she's like, I flipping don't care yeah. anymore. Whatever. Have a look at whatever you need to. Whoever needs to come in can come in. I don't yeah. care anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah it definitely. Um, so then, yeah, literally, I was, like, getting a car. So I, like, got, uh, I mean, my, uh, Sarah helped, Sarah was picking us up in the car, um, I literally got my stuff together. I couldn't put my left. I kicked it. I've still my toe is still bruised now. I don't know if I broke it or something, but I kicked a big like rock on day one, and that toe had been annoying me on my left foot like the whole time. I was limping. It was weird. I was like walking. When you see some of the footage, you're like, I'm I'm limping when I walk, but like mm-hmm. running's a bit better. It was like worse for me to walk. My walk was very slow. It helps to have a good walk if you're going to do an ultra because mm-hmm. you're going to walk at some points. It helps to be faster walking. Anyway, I couldn't even get my left shoe on. So I'm like in the car. I think Sarah gave me some paracetamol. I remember thinking, oh yeah, okay, that, might, that might help. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm just sat in the car. And then Catherine's like got all of them. Like I didn't even have my race bib. I didn't have nothing. 
Catherine got all of my stuff together. Bearing in mind, she'd ran 50 miles mm. the day before as well. And she was thinking, you ask her, she's like, yeah, I, uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to run on day three. Um, felt horrendous. And she was like, then I saw Dave. <laughs> and <laughs> felt, better. Felt, not, felt better. And then, she, and then she said, the other thing she was like, well, and when I saw her, I was like, okay, once we'd got to the start line, she was like, well, this ain't going to last very long. So mm. yeah, I'll start with it. Um, but uh, yeah, we get to the, um, we get there. I finally get my left shoe on, hobble out. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking I've done an amazing job to get here. And I'm like looking for who's, who are the other guys and girls that are absolutely fucked. Yeah, where's my community right now? I need my other, where's the other people that can, <laughs> that can surround myself with to make myself feel better. <laughs> there's one, there's one guy sat down in this village hall. He's about 65 years old. He might not have even been doing the event. I don't know. Everyone else is like, walking around i'm sure they were stiff and stuff but walking around laughing having a smile and yeah oh yeah a bit stiff like mm. but everyone's like doing all right and i was like it just sent me into just a pit of just like it, me, if, i'm i'm here for the pity party i don't know where yeah. can, you, can you direct me to wherever that's happening please i was like literally sat so i found a chair to collapse on i was like again my hair is just over my face because i didn't want to look at anyone <laughs> i didn't i didn't want to look at anyone in the eye because i'd like you know, by disrespecting the event, I was like disrespecting all these people who'd come prepared. Who and I still that? did. I, think, I don't I didn't think cousin it was going to be doing the yeah. thing. <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't like, it wasn't like, you know, to cut a long story short, like we completed, I say we, not I, we completed it in the end within the time frame. Everything, but it doesn't change the fact that I disrespected every single person there ran the event. I don't um, know. Why do you think that? Why do you think you disrespected other people by rocking up to an event and having a pop at something that was outside of your comfort zone but because i can't describe to you how far out of my comfort zone like i'm there as a grown man just crying my eyes out in this room literally like a weird, like if someone had offered me if god had just come out through the door and gone should we just go now and <laughs> you can be dead i'd have been yeah. like oh thank god you're here like, let's go like i don't want to be here no more like and we walked out that door and uh, <laughs> there was one guy. I mean, they said we they went off, and so you know, every, people go off gingerly, but it's a slow jog. And there's the, the good people. I mean, the good people are like ridiculously good. Mm. And they, when we're finishing at midnight, they're getting in at seven o'clock in the evening. Fishing Fair play to the pub. Yeah, um, but anyway, everyone runs off. I can't even remember Catherine, Mrs. Jacko, being with me at this point in the it was it was just dark and i was like gingerly walking i was literally hobbling as i walked out and one of the marshals was like great energy dave <laughs> like and i remember thinking like you're taking the best but i had no energy to like do anything and we had for the first two hours they'd warned us in the rave briefing there was like a, a storm with like 20 mile an hour winds and rain so we come out and i'm like in my mind i'm going well at least I'm moving. I've started. Didn't think I'd get here. Um, best case scenario. We'll walk to the first checkpoint. Get timed out. All my family's here. We'll just walk the rest of yeah. the day. How long is it going to take to limp around 33 miles? I was trying to work. I was like, I don't know. We'll be finished before midnight. I was just mm. trying. I was like, and I was thinking, at least I can say I've done it. There's something there, like I did it, but you not in the, it, yeah. the actual event. I finished the route. Um, it took about 20 minutes to do the first kilometre, which is like... Uh, i trying to think of, think of a word of how slow. It's slow. Yeah. Um, and um, the rain was just like hammering like this 20 mile an hour like wind into her face and you were literally like this is so bleak now um let's just get it over with a bit quicker like if i yeah, yeah. like can we just move a bit faster so i just tried running and it was like my foot was less pain like my toe was less mm. painful running and just started running and i, I remember shouting to Catherine. i was like Catherine. I'm running, I'm running. <laughs> and she was like I know and I was like I don't know how like it was that that was a pretty cool feeling 
it was like there's this override that makes no sense physiologically like it happened a few times I, like I, the last 300 meters I sprinted mm. like and I mean sprinted fast fastest I've ran because I haven't done any fast running for, mm. for a long time just sprinted at the, the last 300 meters of the whole thing with it's like how is that even what's going on there physiologically it doesn't make sense do you think there's a piece there in like um the realization of the system so it's obviously like people have talked about this at, at length in terms of like the physiological capacity and there's almost like a rate limiter you've got the whole kind of very simplistically the fight or flight type of response to extreme stress in that sense mm. do you think is there a, did you feel like that it was a place of the brain was like i just want to get this done like and the faster i can get this done the sooner it's going to be so you're in a place of where it's like i don't want to do it versus I just want to get this done, and the quicker I get this done, the quicker this is going to be over. And then it just shifts into that place as opposed to... So basically, you go on attack mode as opposed to fearing it and fleeing from it. Um, it went... It ended up, for me, being a case of, like... And, like, I, I believe in positive mental attitude and positive thinking. It, positive thinking definitely helps. But it, it, it was not a determining factor for being able to achieve something. Yeah. In that I was so negative, I'd completely given up. Mm. There was no a single ounce of positivity in my body. Um, and actually, thinking was just like a waste of energy. Mm. And um, I, it, was, it was literally going to like those, thinking of like what my sister said to me, like, an actionable step. And it was like, for me, it was, the, it was just, it was like, don't think about anything. I didn't like try not to think about anything. I just ended up like not thinking about anything. Yeah. What's the next and, step? Was it literally like, and it was, it was, step? it was like breath and step, breath and step, mm. breath and step, breath and step. And that, and that's literally, um, literally all it was. But you know, the whole time I had, so Catherine ran those, that all 33 miles at the end. So she'd done over 80 miles across mm. the three days. And I think yeah, didn't get a medal. <laughs> navigating yeah like navigating drink water encouraging just literally like um dragging me mm. through that thing and well done mrs jacko yeah yeah i would not have uh got anywhere close um on my own for sure mate what a story so it's just um I, I don't know I, I, let me share a reflection and i want to give you yeah. a little bit of an open platform because i think we could probably talk about this for a couple of hours but um so you hear those stories where people have been to that um, that kind of place and like I, the one that reminds me of is i don't know if you've seen you're not much of a movie guy are you but like there's one called touching the void where there's a it's the guy who basically gets cut off of a climbing line on k2 falls into a crevasse uh, and then like yes completely busted up and then crawls himself back down to the base camp on K2. And, and his mindset is like, can I get to that rock? Get to yeah. that rock. Can I get to the next rock? And this guy's like, same like, same yeah. place in terms of absolutely broken. Um, but as this, there's definitely that thing that I'm interested in, your reflections on this of going, like, you can hear all those stories and you can watch all the motiv motivational movies around that. But what's the difference of actually finding yourself in that situation to what you are now, like two or three weeks later from a reflective perspective has what's changed as a result of being there that you're now in your perspective of life, hardship, resilience. Yeah. What's no, it's, it, it, a good question. And like, there's, there's like, there's, there's two, there's two big things. Like one is one's connection in that I went into the event thinking it was going to be a challenge for me and I was going to do some like, you know, personal inner work, let's say. What it turned out very quickly to be was like um, a need and a desire like for other people and, and to connect. Um, that, and then the second thing being that, that override um, and that override that was kicking in for because Catherine had it as well because she'd not trained for the, the further she'd run before this was 15 miles and then does 80 like but that for us I believe that override was just coming out of of love and a need to to help someone support someone mm -hmm. I sort of think about it like this if if you fall over down onto the floor and you need help getting back up I pick you up I don't 
pick you up and throw you in the sky. Mm. So I can only help you and show you as much love as you need at that time. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend it, and it wasn't. I wasn't trying it, it, it to at all be about this, but I was so I was out of my depth. I was literally at the bottom of wherever, and I needed a lot. Um, but when you, I, I was just forced into that position of being just totally vulnerable and just totally at the at the mercy or just at the need of of Catherine, um, and it's made me understand some stuff about myself in that, like you're like this, because uh, you will have you you will have. Um, described me as an awkward hugger <laughs> right yeah that that would be a, a, that would be a fair yeah, a fair a fair thing and it's like i didn't know this going into this type of thing but um i'm when i was like you'd get to the checkpoint you'd, like, you'd get to that next checkpoint. and one of the things you're going to get at that checkpoint is some people there cheering for you and if, if anyone there that i like if i saw you you're getting hugged it was like mm. i just desired that like physical contact it was almost like i got energy from the physical contact and there was no awkwardness in it it was just like i oh. need you like you come in here and give me give me it's like i need it um and i've i'm i'm understanding for myself that like there's a desire and a want to like connect deeper with people but an understanding that like i've a uh, I've a, I've an awkwardness to me when I don't know someone. Like it takes me a long time to. So it's not that anything's necessarily changed now. In that, like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, still going to be like socially awkward around someone when I don't don't know them. But I'm aware of that much better, and and I'm aware of like, okay, what 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 things can I start to do or think about that's going to help me connect with people without having to like absolutely bury myself on a on an ultra marathon. Yeah, yeah, um, that's really cool. That's I'm been glad that actually 135 miles of running means that we can actually have a normal hug now. That's going to be good. <laughs> well, if you were there, you would have got one. But what I'm saying now, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still awkward at the moment. I'm still working on it. <laughs> Don't worry. When I see you next, we'll get in there. We'll have, we'll have, we can have a practice in a safe space. Um, right. So we're 45 minutes in, Jacko. We're going to bring it in towards a landing. But there is so much in here that you could probably unpack, and I could continue to do an excellent job as question master, as I feel like I, I have to. Yeah, you have been. Yes. Um, so. If you had a platform now, which you have for the next few minutes, um, what are you sharing? Like, if if someone says, like, and it'll obviously it'll be different for different people, but like, yeah. what is the biggest thing that you would want to pass on from this experience to other people? Um, I was like forced into vulnerability, but got an experience out of that that i wouldn't swap that for it so it's this it's this weird it's this difficult thing of like i haven't got a david goggins message for you of like just hammer yourself and kill yourself yeah. because it's not recommended um as far as i'm concerned but i i experienced a level of like need um and reliance on someone else like a baby mm -hmm. being reliant on on the mother or father um and as an adult we don't do that and a lot of our society will tell us that being strong is that you know mm -hmm. you can do it on your own and and for me it's completely flipped that on its on its head um and there was a bit of a there was a bit of a strange parallel that i'll share but i, I it comes with a caveat of like i, I feel bad saying it because it's because it's un it's it's un, not unfair it's just it's it's not proportionate but there was a parallel that came out um when we were filming some reflections um where you know when my dad died early this year and, and I was living at home helping my mum look after me he, he passed from cancer and the last four weeks like I saw saw his health deteriorate but his um, reliance on my mum like increase as, as his condition deteriorated and it was it was ter it was like the, the the saddest thing i've probably seen but at the same time the most beautiful thing i've seen in that i saw a side of my dad that I'd not sort of really seen before and all he had he had nothing 
it was life was just literally stripped down to nothing. You can't do you can't do anything. But all he wanted was my mum. And he literally remember him sat on the couch and, and saying that and all he wanted was my mum. But then and the beautiful thing was all he needed was a that was it. Yeah. Um and there was that parallel for me, which I say it's disproportional because you know that we're talking about my dad's life. But there was a, there was an, there was yeah. I, it, 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 it's actually I didn't you know I signed up to this event way before my dad got ill, so I didn't sign up to the event to help mm. with the grieving process. But the experience has has has, has given me that. I, I felt like I've went to that went to a place of vulnerability. Um, and I haven't got the answers for people, but I'd encourage people to like, where can you allow yourself to be vulnerable? Because mm. um, some beautiful things can happen if you go there. Um, yeah. Just go there with someone or with people. Good. I'm going to add no comment on that because I think you've said everything that needs to be said. Well, we haven't actually, let's finish the story, Jacko. Did you finish <laughs> The Ring of Fire? Yeah. Yes. In the time um, limit. We're at 15 minutes to spare. There you go. Third from last. Um, interestingly, five minutes after, you finish, you cross the finish line, you have your photo taken, and then someone goes, do you want a beer? And I was like, <laughs> no, can I have some water? And then, and then literally it's like, Marshall's like, uh, looking around, it's got all this beer. And he's like, I don't think we have any water. I think it's got water in it. <laughs> that <okay? laughs> but I sat down, literally, hugging everyone and then once we've stopped hugging and stopped crying um sat down with Catherine and I said to her why do we why do we do these things and not in a when I said we not just me and her I meant we everyone mm -hmm. here but and just people that do events it was like why do we do it because I had I didn't have a sense of achievement at the mm -hmm. end I did have a bit of a perspective on it that it was like it's just a stupid run like it doesn't matter like why does it matter like why did we why did we do that um, it was interesting but the biggest sense of achievement I had was coming into checkpoint one this will be the last thing I'll say the best sense of achievement I had it was coming into checkpoint one about two, three hundred metres before checkpoint one on day three and I was like none of you fuckers <laughs> thought I was going to be here because because I was like I was like I didn't think I was going to be here literally yeah, yeah. right so 106 people started the whole event 106 87 got to day two 56 got to day three and then 53 people finished and they said statistically if you get to the day three your chances are you're going to finish so only three people didn't and i think crikey everyone in that room knew that i was going to be one of those three yeah, that weren't yeah. going to make it so i don't know who that those was. people were but what, what, what happened <laughs> what happened to them but um but yeah i was like I remember coming into that and I was like, I literally felt like I'd come back from the dead. I was like, <laughs> so buoyant. Like the, the energy, <laughs> the, um, the, yeah, the, the, the guys filming will have that on. Cause I'm like, I'm literally like, you know, Frank the tank on, um, uh, on, 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 yeah, I was like, I was like, I'm back, baby. <laughs> you would have liked the, um, they were like, there was bacon and egg sandwiches there. You know, you offer Jacko bacon, egg sandwich. I'm like bacon and egg, but it was no, they, they meant, do you want bacon or do you want egg? And I was like, mm. both. Yeah. Both, and they were like, okay, and then it was so, and then it was like, do you want red or brown sauce? Both, Both. <laughs> just. Like... But it was that feeling of it was that feeling of like, I don't know how I'm here. But you I are. thank that person in front of me, Catherine Bell's like, but I'm here, and it was like, if we can make one, we can make the next one. Yeah, yeah. And then it would literally chip in, chip in them like that. And there was plenty of twists and turns along, along the way. So that, but, but, but generally speaking, it was like, follow Catherine. She's about 50, 100 meters ahead. Come on, Dave. Come on, Rio. <laughs> and any time I was like, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, not recommended. Yeah. Amazing. Let's leave it there, mate. Well done. Congratulations on a, on a fine achievement of human performance, resilience and stupidity. <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it's none of those things until you said stupidity it wasn't it, it wasn't right, yeah you, i think yeah i mean it's 
yeah, it is. It is all of those things, and because I, I think it's all relative to to each individual. And I think that's what you went in for. Like, it, it, well, we maybe didn't know that when you started, but going into these things as an unseasoned um, marathon athlete with no context of what you were doing, like it was always probably going to be about what you were going to learn. And the fact that you finished it in hard conditions um, is is no joke, mate. So well done for that, and um, you should be very proud of yourself for completing the Ring of Fire in such a fashion. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm glad there was there was so many people we met. You're running along, you're like, is this the first time you've done it? And I think I met one person that hadn't done it before. Everyone else, it was like, oh, tried last year, got timed out yeah. on day two. I mean, I remember speaking to someone on the first day. Sorry, I'm diverging. Someone on the first day, this is how this is where what how stupid I was. On the first day, I was like, oh, have you done? And he was like, yeah, uh, there's three of us. Last year, we got timed out at the first checkpoint on day three. Mm. and i was thinking this is day one i'm like fresh thinking what an idiot like <laughs> as if you would as if you'd get to day three morning and then struggle in the morning to get to the first check what did you know yeah. yeah yeah so what i mean is but by that is like i don't have to go back and you know if you'd if you'd not done it it would you'd be going yeah. like oh i can see how people got because i was like why is anyone coming back mm. but i could see how yeah i'm, I'm, I'm yeah, i'll go back as a spectator for sure it's a wicked event yeah. um but um yeah right so we might be we're going to wrap this one up for today thanks jacko for sharing all of that the, the, the going a little bit deeper we may have a small break again so if you're waiting for next week's podcast and it might be a week or so but bear with us there's just a few things to navigate in our going on but we are going to be coming back we are not going anywhere jacko well done good stories sign us off into whenever we're going to be here next uh well just one thing i'll say is there is um there is a successful documentary to to come out um, on it, so we haven't and got it's can, not can, can finished. Can edit donate as well. Can they yeah, people can donate. Yeah, I'll we'll put the link in the show yeah, notes um, for for the Petals Charity for the Just Giving page. Thank you for everyone that's already donated. Tell people um, about it very quickly. What is it, Petals Charity? Um, so it's for uh, families struggling or uh, like dealing with the process of going through uh, miscarriages. Yes. Um, Great so, charity. Very, very important uh, charity. Yeah. So if anyone can donate to that, I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, and yes, the the documentary um, will be out hopefully sometime in November. But we'll keep an eye on sort of emails and socials for any announcements about that. It'll come up because it'll be the number one recommended film on Netflix. So everyone will probably see it, I would imagine. I'm excited <laughs> to see it. It's going to look great. Yeah. So just massive thank you. To, I mean, I had so many messages. And I didn't even look at social media for like three days. And it was like afterwards, like so many messages and people just um, wishing me good luck throughout. And it was, um, yeah, it was amazing, amazing, amazing to see. So thank you to everyone that, that did. Good job. All right. Shall I sign us off? Are you going to do it? You yeah, you sign us off. That's, that's all right. Until next time, keep exploring your physical potential through movement, strength and play. And don't try and do things you can't do. But redefining impossible sort of is that, isn't it? But yeah, you know what I mean. Do it in a progressive right, you are... Right do it in a brand. do it in a progressive approach to your training. Okay, Make sure you do at least off. half of Listen, something. Uh, yeah. Class dismissed. I, I need to go to parents' <laughs> <laughs>